So I've been using the M3 MacBook Air for about a month now and I like it, but should you buy one? Now there's a reason why the MacBook Air is the most popular laptop in the world. I have the M1, I had M2, and I have the M3. People love the MacBook Air through its uh, thin design, its lightweight. A, although the M1 Air is still pretty good performance wise, the design is starting to be a little dated. And that's where we had the M2 MacBook Air where Apple completely redesigned it. And as that same design that we had on the M2, it made it over to the M3. I wish Apple would have done something different, maybe give us a new color. There's nothing wrong with it. It's thin, it's lightweight, you have MagSafe, you have the two USB Thunderbolts on the side, and of course you have your headphone jack, and look how thin this looks. Look, look how thin. Look, if camera came in focus, look how thin this looks. This is super thin. Very, very thin. So it's very understandable, they took the M2 MacBook Air, and they just put on the M3 chip, they made the Wi-Fi faster, and they enabled the dual monitor display, and call it a day. Now I'm gonna be honest, I tested it out one time for a shorts and that was it. I really don't see the need of dual monitors on a MacBook Air for the professionals like the M3 Pro. And yes, it is nice to have that screen real estate, but realistically, most people who buy a MacBook Air, they are gonna use it in laptop mode. Or if anything, they'll use one singular display. I think it's gonna be very rare that people are gonna use dual monitors. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong, it depends on you. Now, when it comes down to performance, yes, the M3 is faster than the M2. It's not something that you're gonna notice in a real world scenario. Cause let's face it, whoever's buying a MacBook Air, they buying it for simpler tasks, such as surfing the web, checking your emails, um, shopping, or, or maybe doing some very minor video editing, maybe some TikToks or whatever on CapCut, word processing, presentation, just to name a few. And the MacBook is perfect for that. But the M2 could do that perfectly fine too. And Apple still sells the M2. Now, unfortunately, the M1 Air has been discontinued, but you could still buy it through Apple Certified Refurbish, which we all know that is where you get in the best deals. You can still add in Apple Care. It's practically a brand new machine. I do want to refresh that video, but Walmart is selling the M1 for $700, which is a steal of a deal because even to this day, the performance on the M1 Air has been stellar. And even just the entire M1 series, because I'm still using the M1 Max, it handles all my video work. It can pretty much handle anything that I wanted to do. Editing videos on the M3 was pretty good. Right when I started putting clips on top of each other and having like B-roll and have the video playing underneath it, that's where the M3 MacBook Air struggles especially with eight gigabytes of ram which by the way this is the base model eight core cpu eight core gpu eight gigabytes of ram 256 gigabytes of ssd storage the complete base model i think for college students high school students business owners entrepreneurs i think they're gonna love the macbook air you're not gonna really need that much power but if you're doing professional work, you're doing this for a living, you're gonna need the extra power for video editing. It might be best to go with the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Air is for most people. I wanna talk about this finish. I end up going with the midnight color yet again, but Apple claimed that this finish, the midnight finish, has a coating where it mitigates the fingerprints. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the fingerprints are still showing here. It might not be as pronounced, but you could definitely notice it very easily. If you wanna minimize fingerprints, I recommend either the silver or the starlight colorway, but I still like the midnight color. You just need to clean it up once in a while. And everything is just exactly the same, the same typing experience. The trackpad is still amazing. Everything is basically the same like the M2, but just with the M3. It is technically better, but now that we have the M3, it might make sense to get the M2 because right now the M2 starts at $1,000, but you can get it even cheaper at Apple Certified Refurbish for $850. And I'm pretty sure you can search around for the best deals. I'll throw a link in the description. So for $850, just under $1,000, you get in a fantastic machine. The M2 is the one that I low key recommend just because of the dollar for dollar value that you're getting. It's the same new design. You have the 1080p webcam amazing display but the m3 just makes it more faster it's just all about speed 
And even looking at the claims, the M3 MacBook Air is 1.6 times faster than the M1 Air. And even with the M2, it is 1.4 times faster than the Air M1. So, I mean, do the math yourself. Is it really a big significant difference? So the M3 MacBook Air is 13 times faster than the fastest Mac with, uh, oh my God. The M3 MacBook Air is 13 times faster than the fastest Mac Intel computer, which is pretty insane. That is it. I mean, I just wanna just update you guys on the M3 MacBook Air. Uh, I really don't got much to say about it. Yes, I find myself have to walk around with adapters because it don't have the SD card slot, but that's where I have my MacBook Pro. That's where it comes into play. So if you're walking around with an Intel MacBook or Mac desktop, whatever you got, this is the upgrade for you. You're gonna see a day and night difference. Apple Silicon is really getting that good to a point where Apple is competing with themselves at this point in the game. You know, it, it's but so fast that you can make these chips. So no matter what, whether you go with the M1 or the M2 or M3, there's really no wrong answers at all. It just.